Welcome to the SB Grid YouTube channel. Software tutorials by developers. Lectures by structural biologists. Unique content brought to you by SB Grid. Good late morning and early afternoon. Uh, depend, depending on where you are. I'm Jermaine Davis, one of the organizers for this uh, spring mini series. Um, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that um, we this is our third seminar in this series. Um, and this one will be recorded and shared on the SB Grid channel. Um, and so we have today uh, the theme single particle cryolium from data to structure. Um, and now we'll move into our second talk for today by uh, Tom Goddard at UCSF. And as Sean mentioned, he led up into, you know, asking the question how AlphaFold can help. Um, and so he'll talk about using AlphaFold protein structures and Chimera X for cryo -EM modeling. And so Tom, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Yeah. Uh, so um, I'm going to talk to you about using AlphaFold models in Chimera X. Uh, look at how to use AlphaFold models as a starting model once you have your cryo-EM map. And I'm mostly going to do a demonstration for you. Uh, we're going to look at three things. One is getting AlphaFold models that have already been computed from the database hosted at the EBI. Uh, then we'll look also at running AlphaFold yourself through Chimera X to predict a, structure, a new structure. And lastly, we'll look at how to um, assess whether the prediction from AlphaFold has the correct packing of domains. This is something I added just last week, and so I'm most excited to, to tell you a little bit about that. All right, so I'm going to start up Chimera X and just show you how this, how this stuff is done. Uh, let's see here. I'm using a daily build of Chimera X because this last part is uh, just available in the daily build. Also, the current production version of Chimera X is from last November. It was before AlphaFold could do multimers, uh, could only do single proteins. And so the current production version of Chimera X is very limited. So you really want to use the daily build. So I'm going to open the map for uh, this uh, membrane protein we're going to take a, a look at. It's from the EMDB uh, 30495 uh, from EMDB. Let me adjust the threshold. So this is a human membrane protein. Whoops. And it's called, the gene is called Tacon. And uh, let me change the, let's see here. Move my image out of the way. Let me change the lighting to have a little shadows. All right. So uh, it was thought to be a mechanosensitive ion channel. We see the transmembrane domains at the top, and then there's some long alpha helices here. It's at, at the bottom. It's a dimer. Um, it's a, it's um, let's see, about three angstroms resolution or so. It was a structure uh, solved last summer. And um, let's see, what else did I want to tell you about it? Uh, I think that's, so, so what we're going to do is try to build an uh, atomic model, and we're going to start by fetching from the AlphaFold database the monomer of this of this dimer structure, so let me uh, let me go to oh oh yeah yeah sorry lost my train of thought here. Um, uh, it was thought to be this uh, this uh, sensor that senses pain mechanically, uh, but the authors I wanted to tell you the authors. <laughs> Uh, who published in the summer said they don't think that's it at all, even though it's still annotated as that. They said it's involves it's involved in lipid metabolism. All right, so it's kind of interesting structure. It's very a small structure for for EM. Let's fetch the alpha fold model for this uh, protein. So I'll go to tool structure prediction alpha fold. And it will bring up this panel, and then I'm going to paste here. Uh, I'm going to paste a sequence of this protein. So I'll cop, just copy and paste. Let me get this out of the way here. And then I'll press this fetch button. And that will go to the EBI. Um, the EBI, uh, the AlphaFold database, has about 1 million 
predicted structures now. They've been adding more like every three months. It started out as 300,000. So this is about three times more than the protein data bank, structures in the protein data bank. See, I think it fetched it already. Just it's not aligned with the map. Um, it has protein structures for every human gene and a bunch of other model organisms and all of the Swiss pro curated, curated sequences. And the most recent addition of two or 300,000 structures was for antimicrobial resistance genes and uh, neglected tropical diseases. And they keep increasing it, uh, the number of structures available. Let me hide our map and let's, let's focus on this structure. So this is the monomer. And the color coding, this is the typical color coding used when you look at alpha fold structures, is by how confident alpha fold was in the positioning of each residue. And blue is high confidence, and yellow and orange and red are lower confidence regions. All right. Um, this, since this uh, protein is a human protein, it's in the database, but many um, systems you might be interested in bacteria that aren't model systems, they aren't going to have a, a already computed prediction in the database. Uh, the first thing you might do is try to search the database to find the closest available sequences. And we can do that with a search button in the AlphaFold panel. Let me press that. And that will do a blast sequence search. And so it's going to re return a whole um, you know, results of all the homologs that it finds in the database. So here it's popped up this panel. Let me stack some of these panels on top of each other so that um, we have a little more space. And whoops, that window's too tall now. Let me do that. Okay, so here are the blast results. Do uh, kind of make this column wider so you can see the species. So you see the top one is human, and then there's mouse, rat, uh, uh, cow. Um, and I can just double click on each of these to load the structure. So if I get the mouse one and rat and uh, say the cow one, I'll just load the top four by double clicking those. And then I can, uh, they're not aligned here. Let me align them. I'll do that with a command matchmaker. Let me see what they're, I have to type in their model numbers. It's, let's see, numbers uh, three through six, three to six, and I'll align that to my original um, structure that I fetched. And then let me do one more thing. Let me color them differently. I'll say rainbow, rainbow structure. So we can see how different or similar they are. And we see in this case, those, those uh, human mouse rat cow are all very similar. So this isn't really a case where you would need to use this search capability. But when you do have a sequence where there isn't an exact match in the database, you may see different confirmations by doing this search. All right, uh, let's see. Let me see what I want to do next here. Uh, let's see if I miss anything. OK, show you that. All right, so let's now try. Oh, actually, so. What I wanted to do was show you what the fit of this structure is to that EM map. And so uh, I think I'll close, close these structures and I'll bring back my map and they weren't aligned. And so let me just show you how good the fit is. It's pretty good, but it has certain problems. In order to do the fit, I'm going to smooth the map first. It will make it easier to see the alpha helices and to do the fit. So I'll say volume. Uh, let's see, Gaussian, the Gaussian smoothing of, let's see, map number one, and I'll smooth it to about eight, uh, eight angstroms resolution, and then I'll adjust the threshold, and then I'll just move this, um, our alpha fold model into the map by hand. I'm going to just select it, and then I just switch the mouse mode to move the selected model. I can move it over here. Um, and I'll try to line up these alpha helices. Um, when I'm moving it with this mouse mode, if I just, um, I'm using the right mouse button. Uh, if I hold the shift key down, I can rotate it too. 
so I can sort of rotate and uh, let's see. So this is a little bit tricky business. Let me let me see if I can can do it live here. Um, let's see. Would help to zoom in some. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. So I'm going to try to align the transmembrane helices here. Uh, and once I get it close, uh, that looks maybe close enough. Then I'll if I go to the toolbar here. Toolbar has different tabs. I go to this map tab. There's a fit icon here. If I click that, it will just optimize the fit. OK. So you can see that the, the alpha helices in the transmembrane region, whoops. All right. Oops. Okay, come on. Those look those look very good. Uh, but the two helices, the very two very long helices, they aren't aligned quite right. And we could fix that. We could select those long two helices, and we could move just those atoms. There's a mouse mode to move just these atoms, and then we could minimize it so that the linker um, connects well. And then we could start using the Isolde plugin um, developed. To Chimera X developed by Tristan to refine the side chains into the map. Um, but what I'd like to do first is instead, let's try to predict a dimer structure. Um, uh, we could fit two monomers because yeah, these monomers fit pretty well, but let's see what AlphaFold does in predicting a dimer. All right, uh, so let me go back to my AlphaFold panel and Instead of to predict a dimer, instead of putting in one copy of the sequence, I put in two. I just separate them by commas. If I had a, a tetramer, I'd be pasting in four sequences here. So I'll just paste in another copy of the sequence and I'll press this predict button. And this is going to run on Google's Colab servers. So it's not going to run on your local machine because it needs this powerful GPU and it needs big databases. Um, when you first do this, it will ask you to sign in to Google. You're just normal Google account for Google Mail or Google Calendar, Google Drive. Um, I've already done that, so it remembers it. And it will also ask you, do you want to run this? Just a security question, because it's code coming from Chimera X. So I say run anyways. And now what it's going to do is install AlphaFold on a Google virtual machine and run it on, for this dimer. And this, we're not going to wait here to see what happens because this takes about two hours to run. That's kind of a typical time. You see here at the top, this is, so the panel that came up is um, Google Colab, the user interface of Google Colab. By the way, Colab, if you're not familiar, it's Google has provided these free um, virtual machines, cloud machines, and they have GPUs, which is the, the unique feature because AlphaFold uses GPU computation to speed it up about six or seven times faster than, than if you use just CPU. So, okay, so it's predicting, uh, it's installing AlphaFold and it's gonna run the prediction. Let us let me just bring you, show you in my web browser what happens after a couple hours have gone by. So um, he, this log continues, it installs, uh, Hummer to do a sequence, multiple sequence alignment. AlphaFold, the basic input to it is thousands of aligned sequences. And it looks at their mutations in order to understand which residues are covarying. And covarying residues are probably close together in the structure. Um, so it will install Hummer, install a matplotlib, a plotting package, install AlphaFold, and OpenMM does energy minimization. So it does all those installations on this fresh virtual machine. Then it searches the databases. Um, and here, this is a step that will take half an hour or an hour because it's 250 gigabytes of sequence data to make a multiple sequence alignment. And then this plot shows you the multiple sequence alignment. So we had, this was a homo dimer, so just one sequence. So we see just one plot and residue number along the horizontal axis. And the coverage means how many sequences did it find covering at, in this multiple sequence alignment. So at the, at the middle, about 4,000 sequences um, cover the sequence of this Takan gene. Um, 
So that's good. If, if you only have 10 sequences that cover, this is really going to reduce the quality of the structure that alpha fold can produce. You want it to be in the thousands, even hundreds gets a little bit iffy. All right, it then predicts five different structures using five different alpha fold neural nets and, and chooses the best one. So here's what it did uh, for this particular uh, transmembrane protein. Um, it's the, uh, let's see, is the blue, I forget what our colors are, alpha fold. Yeah, alpha fold is the blue. And the, the, the solved, I brought for comparison, the solved cryo-EM structure from last summer is in red. And so uh, you see um, that it's not perfect. Again, the long helices at the bottom aren't aligned in the alpha fold prediction. Um, so let's see. I want to turn now, okay, let's see, what else to say? Uh, so when it finishes, these things are all downloaded uh, automatically from Google Colab into your downloads folder, downloads Chimera X alpha fold. So you can look at all of the five different models. It will show you when it finishes, the, the best fitting model will just load it automatically into Chimera X, but there is the additional information. Another piece of additional information that you get from AlphaFold is it predicts um, which regions of the structures it's confident in. And so that's what I want to look at now. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's go back to the to Chimera X and let's do that. Um, so I'll just leave that running and uh, let me. Uh, I close this. I think I'll close these, the current models. Uh, and I'll open the best fitting model for you. Close all models, sure, why not? And then I'll open uh, from that downloads folder uh, my, the prediction that, that I got after a couple hours. Oops. Don't double click. Okay, so I'm in downloads, Chimera X. Alpha fold. I have a bunch of. This is also where all the fetched um, models from the alpha fold database are placed, so I, so that it doesn't have to refetch them if I want to look at them later. And then there are a bunch of folders: prediction five, prediction six. I think it's prediction five I did yesterday. Um, and best model. Choose that. So here is the dimer prediction. And if I go back to my alpha fold panel, this uh, button that says error plot um, will tell us something about uh, whether alpha fold thinks this is correct. So let me click that. And what we're gonna look at is it's called the predicted aligned error. And it's for every pair of residues, alpha fold, every pair of residues. So there are 700 in this structure, it looks at, it, it makes an estimate of how accurate the relative position of those two uh, residues is relative to the true structure. Of course, it doesn't know the true structure, but it's just estimating based on its prediction how accurate the relative position is. Um, it, that, that data is in a file. It's a, two, a matrix with residues on both sides. So let me choose that file. It's these JSON files. So, and now that I've opened it, Chimera X plots it. Whoops, I didn't mean to, to drag it there. Let's see. Oops, okay. It's resized it. Okay. Okay, so both the horizontal and vertical axes are, are the residues. Okay, so about 700 residues. Ah, ah, there's a, okay, so I need to tell, Chimera, don't dock when I drop this. Don't dock it in as a panel, as a separate panel. And just right-click on it, and there was a menu entry. All right, so we see like a four by four grid of blocks. The darker colors mean it's more confident that that particular pair of residues. So the vertical axis is one residue, horizontal is another residue. Dark color means it's confident that their relative position is correct. So this dark block right here, I'm going to draw a little outline, maybe hard for you to see, 
I just dragged a little outline. That's this. Um, so one of the monomers, it's the transmembrane domain. And if I draw around this upper left corner, I drag a little box. That's the long alpha helices. And we can see in the regions uh, uh, that connect the long helices to the transmembrane, we see a lighter green color, which means it's not so confident of the relative position between the transmembrane domain and these long helices that you're seeing at the bottom. The lower right corner here is just the other copy. If I select the whole big block there, you see that's the other monomer of the dimer. And it can, chimerics can use this data to um, divide the structure into domains where AlphaFold thinks within the domain, it's very confident, but between the domains, it's not so confident. This was an idea of Tristan Kroll, who developed the Isolde tool in Chimerax that does atomic model refinement. Uh, and he wrote the code to do this. And I just implemented it, or just took his code a, a few days ago. And it's this color PAE domains. PAE stands for predicted aligned error. That's this, this matrix data that AlphaFold provides. So if I click that, it will compute these domains and color them. So according to this matrix, the two transmembrane domains, AlphaFold is very confident that their relative position is correct. And the long helices, it's confident also that those are correct, only their orientation relative to the transmembrane domains, it's not so sure about. That's why we see it in different colors. All right, uh, ba -ba. let's see if, if that was, uh, Oh, I guess to show you one other thing here. Uh, remember at the start when we opened a monomer, we saw the different kind of coloring, the blue, red, yellow coloring. And that is also available uh, here on this, on this error plot. It says color PLDDT. This is the per residue confidence score. So if we do that, we get back here for the dimer, what the per residue confidence score is. And this, this gives you some slightly different information. It tells you whether it thinks that particular residue is uh, in the right position within its local environment. Okay, so there are those two separate confidence measures that are worth looking at. And I think, uh, oh, okay, the last few bits I wanna tell you about are some of the limitations of this. And there are a lot of limitations. Um, first is, uh, on Google Colab, uh, when you're doing these predictions, it will only do about 1,000 amino acids total. So this dimer had about 700, 350 for each monomer. And that's limited by the size of the memory of the graphics card. And on Google Colab, they have old, five-year-old graphics cards, uh, P100, K80, NVIDIA graphics cards, um, rather old equipment but it's free. Uh, so uh, it will only handle the standard 20 amino acids. That's an alpha fold limitation. No ions, no ligands, no nucleic acids. Um, alpha fold database only has single proteins predicted. So if you want a multimer predicted, you have to run that yourself. And the predictions take hours. Also, when you predict multimers, or if you just have a multi-domain single protein, the domain positioning that AlphaFold produces um, it has a pretty high error rate. In, a, in their AlphaFold multiple paper, uh, they did a benchmark against 4,000 structures in the PDB, uh, multiple structures, and about one third of the interfaces between the proteins were incorrect, one third. So two thirds correct, one third correct. Um, so those interfaces, it gets the domains right with much higher uh, frequency, but the interfaces between domains, uh, you, have to, you have to look at these plots and consider whether they're correct, or you can see in your cryo-EM data that they don't match the, the domain packing. So if you want to get do uh, predict multimers that, or single proteins that have more than a thousand amino acids, you need some better graphics card, basically. So let me tell you a little bit about running AlphaFold on your own computer. It's a bit difficult to set up. 
Um, you need, if you were going to do better than Collab, you need a, a really great graphics card. So if you have a uh, NVIDIA RTX 3090, the top of the line, like a uh, consumer graphics card, it has 24 gigabytes. Uh, and it can predict structures and tests I've done up to maybe 2,000 amino acids, maybe 1,500 to 2,000. Um, if you, that's a, like about a $2,000 graphics card. If you have a really exotic card or your university has these GPU resources, uh, we have these at, eight, at uh, UCSF here. We you have an NVIDIA A40 card that has 48 gigabytes. And I've predicted 3,000 or 3,500 residues with AlphaFold. But that's a $10,000 graphics card. So this equipment is expensive. Um, if you're going to set it up, you need the databases that AlphaFold uses. And there are two terabytes of data when you run the full AlphaFold. So it takes a while to download that. So there's a little bit of effort to set this up. Um, if you want the thing to run as fast as possible, it's useful to have an SSD drive with those databases. Um, so a pretty big, um, fast drive and instead of a spinning disk will help do those sequence alignments against terabytes of data quickly. Um, and you probably won't be surprised by this, AlphaFold runs on Linux. Uh, it won't run on Windows and Mac. Okay, so those are some of the limit, basic limitations and uh, be happy to answer questions. There's a couple of questions in the Q&A that you may want to address that I'm not 100% sure of the answer. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can you see them? I can read them to you if you can. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I, I've, I've got it now. Uh -huh. uh, let's see. If we use AlphaFold prediction tool in Chimera X, possibly a structure that we have solved, does that mean Google Colab is now privy to that structure? Um, so uh, Colab, um, another one of its limitations is that that virtual machine will disappear in a few hours along with all your data. And as far as I know, uh, um, it really disappears. Google has not archived any of it and knows nothing about your data. So um, you know, ultimately you should check Google's privacy policy with Google Colab if you're very concerned about it. Uh, but I don't think there's any issue. And Chimera X also doesn't have any access to any of your data. It just sends it to Google Colab and brings it back to your machine. And the second question. Uh, uh -huh. Tom, yeah. uh, yes? one, one thing to add to that is that there was a, a recent legal thing talking about uh, AI developed results and are they copyrightable, patentable, whatever. So that's oh. still an evolving question if anybody's concerned from an IP perspective. Oh, okay, but. interesting. I know that the million structures currently at the AlphaFold database are uh, freely available, even for commercial use. Yeah, I think freely available, everybody is happy with. It's if you wanted to restrict it more, then the lawyers are still figuring that out. Sure, yeah. Sorry uh, for jumping in. So, oh, no, good, it's good. I appreciate that. Uh, next question here. Can AlphaFold predict different conformations of one protein? And if not, is this something that could be done in the future? So yeah, you may have different conditions. You may have a ligand bound or not bound, or um, and AlphaFold only predicts one configuration. It doesn't know anything about ligands and it doesn't know anything about configurations. So this is a this is a kind of quite significant limitation of of AlphaFold. One also, way you... um, it gives you, it doesn't it make a whole bunch of models, but then it decides which one is the best. Yeah, yeah. So, so that... you don't have a choice to get more than one. Is that true? No, no, that, that's a good point. In the download directory, like where I, when I went to get this, um, this error file, there are, five, there are the five structures that it predicted. They're usually quite similar, but they're, if it's, if AlphaFold's very uncertain, it will produce some different confirmations. But that's only because it's uncertain. It doesn't have a good enough se multiple sequence alignment. Um, so you can't tell it anything about the different conditions that would lead to different confirmations. Um, so there is one way you can potentially control, um, get AlphaFold to make predictions in different confirmations. And that is to give it PDB like structure templates, like give it an experimental template similar 
to the confirmation that you expect to find. And that can bias AlphaFold to um, produce structures that are similar to that template. That won't work with the Chimera X and the Google Colab. You would have to run AlphaFold on your own machine to be able to specify specific templates. So Tom, I have a quick question. Um, sure. If you run it overnight, does it time out? Yeah, so Google Colab, uh, they don't guarantee any amount of time. It may not even connect if they don't have virtual machines, although it always has in my cases, in the cases I've tried. Um, they don't specify exactly what the maximum time is, but it's a matter of like five hours or 10 hours, and then they'll just time out your session. Um, so it's a free service and you're not guaranteed anything. There is a Colab Pro service and it, set, it claims it will give you the better GPUs that are faster. None of them have more than 16 gigabytes of memory. Um, it's $10 a month. And it also, it, yeah, it won't, I think it will go 24 hours before timing out. And so I've been using that GoLoop Colab Pro because $10 a month, it seemed, it seemed because I do a lot of testing and a lot of runs, it was worth it. Great. Okay, Great. a few more questions in Q&A. Uh, is there an, any alternative way for the protein confirmation prediction of a ligand bound structure? Um, again, only the only way you're going to get AlphaFold to predict something different is to um, is to give it a template. And you'd think that because AlphaFold doesn't use ligands, it's always going to give you the confirmation that's uh, that's appropriate for an APO structure, no no ligand bound. But that's not true. Often it gives you the confirmation for a ligand bound structure because it was trained on things in the PDB. And those often had ligands bound. And so the neural net often produces a ligand bound confirmation, even with no ligand. Uh, is there something that we can do to get a correct prediction of a multimer? Uh, so when it doesn't pack the domains correctly, um, again, you could run it AlphaFold yourself and give it some experimental templates that would help that packing. But probably more often you would just chop up the alpha fold protein, like separate the transmembrane domain from these long helices and just fit them separately into your uh, cryo-EM map as a starting model. And let's see, uh, another question about, can it predict different conformations of one protein? I think uh, you answered okay, that one already. It. That one's answered already. Okay, are there more questions? We're, We're a little just bit about a minute after. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. So, so thank you everyone for attending. The reminder for next week, it will be the um, uh, workshop um, as part of the uh, U.S. National Committee for Crystallography held at the same time on the SB Grid um, Consortium. Um, and so we thank you for tuning in and see you at a later date.